Hey, I always thought bubble sort was useless. It's one of those algorithms I had to learn in college as some sort of intellectual masturbation exercise to prove to my teacher that I do read the books that he assigns. But one thing that's kind of unique about bubble sort, it was how easy it is to implement. In fact, it's so easy that if I were on an airplane and it was about to crash, but the captain like busts out of the door and is like, hey, if anybody here knows how to sort a list of integers, we need you right now. I'd raise my hand, I'd say, name the language, I got you. That's just how easy bubble sort is to implement. But then I read the article, when would you ever want bubble sort? And I saw this animation and it made me realize there's actually a pretty cool property to bubble sort. But first, for those that don't have any idea what bubble sort is, let me help you out really quickly. I have this nice list of integers and I would like it sorted. Now, with bubble sort, you start off on the first two integers and you say, hey, I can sort two, right? Is five less than three? It is, okay, so let's just swap these two. That is it, so now we have three, five, seven, one. And then what we do is we move this little two comparator up and we do it to the next one. Is five less than seven? It is, okay, we're good to go. Then we do it again. We move that little two comparator up and say, hey, is seven less than one? No, it's not. All right, we're gonna need to swap those ones right here. So now we have the following, which is gonna be three, five, one, seven. Now the unique thing about this is that these three items right here are not sorted, but this one item is sorted. The biggest or the smallest number was bubbled to the top, hence the name bubble sort. And that is why that animation, you can watch it slowly go from unsorted to sorted because the list becomes progressively more sorted every single pass you run. The article goes on to tell you about how you can also use bubble sort for rendering objects closest to the camera and then further out and determine which objects to hide and that it's actually an optimization in a very busy scene. Look at that. This whole time I thought bubble sort was useless, but apparently it has its purposes in game rendering. Oh, fuck. But this actually kind of got me thinking, when would I ever use, oh my goodness, I don't have a headset on. Oh, I feel naked. All right, all right, all right. All right, much better. So that kind of got me thinking, why would you ever want a sort as you go algorithm? Obviously bubble sort is n squared, so it's not efficient. So often you're gonna fall back to something like quick sort or merge sort on any sizable list. And then the reality is that insertion sort is faster, just like in a practical sense, even though it's also n squared. So on smaller lists, you typically use insertion sort. So why in the world would I ever want to use bubble sort? So I started thinking about that because it's just kind of an interesting question. And I realized there was one point in my life in which bubble sort actually would have been super useful and I was a complete idiot for using quick sort. It was in 2012 and I was competing in MIT's battle code in which we tied for 13th. That's a pretty dang good place. And uh, even funnier, that same year, I ended up going out to dinner with the infamous backdoor Wang of FTX. Yes, the backdoor Wang and SBF himself. Now, if you're not familiar with Battle Code, it's pretty straightforward. You're usually on some sort of map in which there's a set of resources or something in which you're competing against one other player in a domination for either resources or doing da damage to their HQ. Kind of like StarCrafty in a way. At least that was 2012. It was very StarCrafty. If you could comment a little bit on how you decide when to build an artillery. Our artilleries are using the dot product and the unit vector to basically determine how far away from our HQ line to the other HQ to say, hey, we want an artillery in this spot because it's going to be in between us and the enemy. There was headquarters. Then there was these little resource points throughout the entire map. And then you could spawn little guys that could go around and fight either each other or go and capture resources. But the twist is, is that each one of these guys, you could only run so many operations. You had 10,000 op codes is what they would say. So like accessing something from array, I thought I forgot what it was. It was like 10 op codes or something like that. So every single operation you did would end up costing a decent amount of your op codes. So you had to be careful because if you ran out of your op codes, your guy would just sit there and freeze. So if you went off and did an expensive operation, your guys could freeze for like 10 rounds, 20 rounds at a time, which was very dangerous because you could just be killed. So one of the problems I had to solve was, okay, there's all these resources across the map. I really want to be able to find the resources that are closest to me and furthest from the player and start capturing those because that's where we're gonna to wanna to set up our base to be able to spawn, save more guys, get more resources, whatever it was, I can't even remember. 
The problem was, is that often there'd be like 20 or 50 of these resources on the map, and your guy would just spawn in and sit there for like 25 rounds because sorting all these and figuring out which set of resources to capture was just too computationally expensive for one of the little action figures to run around. So I devised this extremely complicated algorithm where I would do quicksort. And if you're not familiar with quicksort, quicksort is a recursive algorithm which splits the list in twain effectively by picking a pivot point and then sorting that sublist and then splitting that sublist again in twain. And then we're gonna sort and then we're gonna keep on doing that all the way down to we're just to one number. And now that whole list is considered sorted. So I created each one of these possibilities as like a state node, and then I ended up converting it from a depth first search kind of sorting algorithm into a breadth first search algorithm in which I used a queue and kind of walked through it layer by layer. That way I could cancel any one operation and only use a portion of my bytecode and then allow all the other operations that we need to do to take place. Well, looking back on this, I realized something. What I could have done is used bubble sort. It's cheap. It's extremely cheap. It's much cheaper than creating structs and classes and inserting things into queues and popping items off. It is so much simpler to just run through the array once. How many byte codes do I have left? And how much of my array do I have left? Because you only need to keep track of just a couple integers and the array itself to be able to run bubble sort in a progressive manner. See, what I could have done is I could have had like my current round that I'm on on bubble sort. And then all I would have to do is go, okay, well, if I'm on round five, that means my five furthest elements are sorted. And so if I still haven't used those five resources, then I don't even need to sort further. Here, I'm going to pick this one resource because that's the one I wanna do. And I don't even need to further sort it. Every single time I need to search further for a resource to be used, I'd have to do one more round of sorting. And like looking back on this, I realized that my engineering brain of just being like, okay, hey, you know, n log n, it's objectively better, right? I mean, n squared, n log n, obviously better. So I wrote an entire apparatus that was so complicated to solve something that if I would have just taken a bit more time and not just instantly jumped to the best engineering solution, I would have engineered a better solution. And this kind of just makes me realize that there's this fundamental flaw, especially when you're young. You see something that works, you see something that's considered the best in class, and then you just apply it. Always, this is the answer, because it's the best. And what you don't realize is sometimes being dumber is actually a better solution. Now, I continued to make a very similar version of this mistake throughout my career for a while, which was abstractions, right? Going all in on some delicious clean code style stuff with all the different factories and all that, where I would inevitably build up an entire like abstraction layers and everything just for a single curl call to go get some data and bring it back. Well, hey, you never know. What happened if I need to start reading from files? No, no, I'm never gonna need to learn how to read from files. It's always going to be the same. The only actual usefulness for doing all this is it actually helped me learn where to put some boundaries for better testing, just in case I want to be able to have like an offline provider so I could do really quick tests or just have the real production thing. The rest of it, man, I built some complicated AF stuff over and over again until I learned. Sometimes it's the simple stuff that really makes great solutions. And looking back on this MIT problem, man, that bubble sort, that would have been one elegant solution. So it does turn out bubble sort is mostly useless. Yes, it's not used in rendering. It would actually be terrible to be used in rendering. And for the most part, it's never ever going to be useful. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where you only need to progressively sort a list, <laughs> do I got an algorithm to sell you? The name is thank you for 1 million subscribers. Holy cow. Can you believe it? Can you believe this channel, did this, this dork channel actually made it to a million? Thank you. A gen. I know it's not easy to find developers to work with. Trust me, I hired TJ. So how do you find quality people to work with without spending all of your time on LinkedIn? Well, with G2i, you can go from interview to first PR in as little as seven days. G2i has helped people get placed at Meta and 1Password, and they run React Miami, so they're super embedded in the JavaScript community. So if you want to find top talented software developers, check out G2i.co.